please drop by. We have a seat just for you. Love you. Sit back and enjoy our Bible study. Clap your hands for about 15 seconds. Shabbat, we have visitors this evening. I'm excited whenever someone comes here. I don't care who you are, race, creed, color, ethnicity, insane or sane. Church is for everyone. Can I get a witness? And I'm touched by God just to have one. The Bible says... When one soul gets saved, I thought I had a church. The angels in heaven rejoice. We have more than one, but I'm just so moved. Keep playing like that. I don't want you to go to that other music. I want to stay right there. This person has watched us via YouTube and came from Nassau, Bahamas. I didn't hear nobody. Nassau, Bahamas. I just finished talking to a prominent pastor in Nassau, Devard Francis. He just called me today discussing business about us coming back to Nassau. We'll make that work. Sister Tamika Rose, where are you? Tamika Rose, can we clap for Tamika Nassau, Bahamas? Peas and rice or rice and peas? Peas and rice. I know you're from conk salad, conk soup, conk everything. When I go there, I enjoy it. I wasn't used to seeing chickens just walk around as they want to. But my mom was from Costa Rica. I love the Bahamas. Let's clap for our Bahamian sister. And then some kind of way, she found a guest who lives in Apopka. I don't know how you live in Nassau and persuade someone from Apopka to be your guest on Bible study. Sister Darlene Nizir, can we clap for Sister Darlene? Darlene, you should have been here. We right around the corner. Hey, yeah, right. <laughs> you too. A view again from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, where I did a lot of ministry, a lot of ministry for over 10 years straight from 93 till 2005. Rhonda Cotton, where's Rhonda Cotton? Where's, can we clap for Rhonda Cotton? Are you a member of a church there who's Pastor John Hastings. Oh, Jenkins. Really? You know, that ain't no small name. That's a huge name. That's one of the most prominent churches in America. Let's clap for her pastor, the Reverend Dr. John Jenkins. Now, I don't know where this is. Online viewer from Billings, Montana. Is it Montana? Is Montana in the house tonight? Oh, this is our first time having people from Montana. <laughs> Sister Mandia and Lola Younger. Mandia and Lola Younger. Let's scream from those from Montana. Lord, our ministry is reaching the world. Reaching the world. We have visitors on Wednesdays and Sundays. God is good to us. On July the 18th, the wonderful Mays family celebrated 21 years of marriage. Stan Crystal, your husband's in the back. Let's scream for them. He just walked out. And they know how I feel about them. They know I love them. They know the role I play. And I appreciate them. Give me a little more volume here. Make it full and don't walk too far where I cannot see you. 
on July the 22nd, I'm going to believe, is a prominent birthday. Brianna Kuzer, where are you? Brianna Kuzer, where are you? She will be turning... Bella, my fine member who makes every service from afar. Stand up, Bella. Y'all clap for Bella. I want Bella to feel good. <laughs> on Sunday night, I was prompted by the Holy Spirit to tell all of you, and some of you may not believe it, but today starts a new turn in your life. It does. Hold that. It does. You don't receive it all on Wednesday. The process begins. God is not a fairy tale God, but he's a faithful God. Am I right about it? But Bella heard her pastor, that's me, preaching on Sunday night. I hope I showed some of you that it takes faith to walk away from everything. Sunday, what we raised was astronomical, and the Lord said, let them have it. A lot of you really get concerned about your money, but when you trust God with your everything, I promise you he'll blow your mind like he's already blown mine. Can you clap for a mind-blowing experience? Well, Bella on Sunday night gave every dime she had. I had no idea. She gave every dime she had. I also told my focus group for that meeting, send your offering in that direction. And Bella uh, went out to work. She got a call. She had in June, she had to pay uh, $500 just for some paperwork to handle some business. And today they called her back and said, we want to reimburse you all your money. That is called restoration. I said, that is called restoration. I want you to just look at someone and tell them I'm next. I feel it in my soul. I feel it in my soul. Pray for your pastor. I am very, um, and Patty has known me over 50 years. I counted the years now, so it's about 50. I am very serious about relationships that I build. Especially those of longevity that I have had on the East Coast. We have lost a friend of mine who was one of the greatest singers, Bishop Kirby Brown. Let's clap for his family, send strength in that direction. Don't worry, we're going to have to do it for you one day. And then one day, your family going to have to do it for you. <laughs> Nothing was wrong with these people. Then we had uh, Michael Brooks, who was one of the most genius brains and producers of the world-renowned the world -renowned gospel group called Commission. Wrote most of the songs. Everybody knows the group for Fred Hammond and on Marvin Sapp, but there were plenty of famous uh, Re recording artists and these producers of Witness. His wife was the lead singer uh, whose daughter is Tasha Page, who we know, and her mama, that was her mother's husband. But we're praying for them in Detroit. Can we clap for them as well, praying for them? <laughs> and then Evangelist Fondria Lewis of New Jersey, she raised a miracle child who, who is basically like my biological daughter. 
that has been a weight on me for over a week. It's very heavy. Kayla, who I call Lyric, Kayla Evans, uh, was crushed between two cars, said she wasn't going to live, said she couldn't walk, but that girl grew to play the bass, sing, drums, dance with her walker, and uh, she battled with cancer, but then God called her home. We need to pray for her mother and the entire Lewis Evans family. That means you definitely have to pray for me. These are very personal to me. And then uh, on yesterday or today, Robert Demetrius, I'm, 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 I'm just shocked, was singing at the GMWA, uh, supposedly fell out and never recovered out of the coma. He's going home to be with the Lord. He was my musician's brother-in-law slash brother, who y'all remember years ago, Joe Thompson, of Brooklyn, New York, uh, who was the uncle of Elder Ferguson's daughter who died in the flames of fire. It's a lot going on. Let's pray for their family. Can y'all clap for them? Let's pray for them. But if you're glad to still be alive, why don't you applaud life? I have nothing to die from, everything to live for. Regardless of what I'm going through, nothing means anything when God wakes you up every morning. Do I have a witness? Now, if you don't want to wake up, you can tell him. You don't want to wake up, tell him. Because some of y'all talk a lot of trash, just tell him. Because he seems to be uh, honoring that request everywhere. I don't care how bad life seems. If God wakes you up, he's got something in store for you. I don't hear nobody and you have to keep striving. I told folk, let us not just say rest in peace, but let us live in peace. Don't just rest in peace. Learn to live in peace. It's good to see Elder Mixon back in the house with us after his long journey in New York. He could not get back, and there was no bright line for him to take. <laughs> he was stuck in New York, and I don't mind coming behind all that. I don't mind coming behind everything else. And then, this will be the Sunday I miss, but I want you all in church because our associate pastor will be the voice on Sunday morning. I, I need you all to clap for him, Pastor. Pastor, uh, what well, we call him Pastor J. He will be the messenger. Everyone will still be here including doctor, but he will be the messenger because we've not heard from him, from him in some time. And I need us to hear, thus saith the Lord, you are in great hands. But when it comes to convocations, that calls upon my bishopric duties. Amen? Amen. That calls upon my bishopric duties, and I have to honor that to maintain global relationships around the world. But the word of God is the same no matter whose mouth it comes out of. And we don't want to be a cult. I don't hear nobody. We want to set precedence that we can hear God without a popular a person having to preach or sing or play. This church is not raised on fame. We are raised organically by the power of the Holy Ghost. And we ought to thank God for the real pastor, the Holy Ghost. That's the real pastor of this church. That's the pastor of this church. And then on Sunday morning, I told you that's when you'll miss me. Sunday morning, I am at New Birth with Dr. Jamal Bryant and their family. Can y'all clap for where I will be? You can watch it online. 
and it will be saved. It'll be on my page. Pray for your pastor, because by then, I may not have a voice after Thursday and Friday, because I don't save anything. I preach like he's coming back tomorrow. Amen. So I don't hold nothing in the tank because we're going to a bigger ministry. And a lot of folk are excited about it as if they've never been in a big church. But you're going with your pastor to a big church, but you got the big preacher they bringing in your church. So you should be excited about your church. And if you can play for flights and hotels, you can give a bigger offering here so I can stay home. You see? Y'all understand that? All right. They are taking your pastor away from you. That should tell you something. So we appreciate God. Let's get right into the word of God. And I think also another family just celebrated their wedding anniversary, the Clevelands. They just celebrated their wedding anniversary as well. Elder who what now? Okay, I'm aware of that. I mean, they wanted to be announced. Huh? That was Patty or something. Patty and Patty had to touch you. Patty, my family. I ain't got to say nothing about Patty. I know what I'm doing. I'm... Time for the word of God. See, that's stuff you're supposed to find out before church. All right. Hebrews chapter 11. Now, this is our fourth Bible study on faith. This is our eighth sermon. Four on Sunday about faith. And if you're keeping record, you should have faith by now. And four in a teach mode alone. Man, we ought to thank God for Jonathan Vickers who sang on Sunday night and did such a beautiful job. And I want this to be reannounced on Sunday. Did not our band smash the house on Sunday? What? Ric Flair. Woo! Roch, uh, Macho Randy Man Savage. Savage. Give me a Slim Jim. Oh, yeah. Mr. Johnson, do you smell? Y'all killed it on Sunday. Oh, man, I was a proud pastor. Clap for all of our wonderful minstrels. Psalmists, clap better than that. Don't play. Because if the world start inviting all of us gifts, you ain't got no church. Don't get familiar with people. Familiar's a demon. Don't get familiar. I appreciate their gifts. They slam. And they probably got so many DM messages. I got to pray for them on Sunday. I got to pray for all of them. They said, Bishop, when is the next event? Tomorrow. Hebrews chapter 11, this is our fourth teaching on such a critical and yet conflicting text and subject on faith. Touch the mind and tell them I'm learning a little more about faith. Now, I'm going to beg you all, at least three of you, to talk to me for 25 minutes, but I'm going to beg all of you to listen and respond. And I mean, really listen, because the sermon I'm about to teach, if you miss this one, none of the others will ever matter. Now, you ain't never heard me say that, have you? You miss this.
principal teaching, the rest of the stuff you jumping for is null and void. If God said by Wednesday he's going to start blessing us, my sermon must match what the prophetic word says so that you learn how to activate that season in your life. If you're sitting there, somebody with faith, just touch them and say, wonder twins, activate. That's the same as saying where there's two or three gathered together in my name, touching. It only takes one believer along with you to activate what's been so suppressed. What's been dormant, mundane, stagnant. Now, don't y'all try to have no church now. Because I'll break out in a moment. But let us remember this. Chapter 11 of Hebrews is called the Hall of Faith. The Hall of Faith. In that chapter, for the three who said you'll talk to me, you have several character references. We use one for three to four weeks, which was Abraham. I had to tuck him away because I'm bringing him back out next month. The man is lethal. Got to talk about him and his wife one more time because he's lethal. Then we talked about his nephew Lot. I guess y'all forgot about him, so if you forgot about him. And we taught you that in order for your faith to be activated, you may have to lose a lot. The less you have, the more faith you need. Will you tell someone that? The less you have, the more faith you need. I also thought that there was only one type of faith. But I'm about to tell two people out of the three, because the rest of you, I just asked you to listen and respond where you feel to. But the other three that I challenged, it was because your season is based on your activity. Don't do it now, you already lost, but I'm talking to three of you. And I mean what I'm saying, because when your pastor speaks, you gotta hang on to what he says. I want what God spoke to come to pass, but you can't be disconnected from the message. But I thought everybody said you got to have faith in God, but you also may have to have faith in a person who has faith in God. Y'all ain't talking. Because all of you have a measure of faith and your faith may not measure up. So when yours does not measure up, you need to call reinforcements and somebody that can handle pressure better than you can. Look at your neighbor and tell him, my faith plus your faith equals mega faith. That's mega faith. And tell him, do not have mega faith live, living with minor blessings. Will you tell you? I told you, listen and know where to You can't have huge faith and stay locked up in a small blessing. The Bible says these words, according to your faith, be it unto you. When Jesus, Peter said this, not Jesus, but when Jesus spoke unproduction or no produce on that fig tree, Peter translated it to be he cursed the tree. So we're going to hear whatever Peter says. Jesus said from that day forward, no man shall eat of thee, neither shall you live. And Peter recognized through proper investigation that the tree had dried up from the roots. That's how they say it when they old, from the roots. That the tree dried up from the roots. And Peter was spellbound. He said, Master, look, the tree that thou cursed is withered up. Jesus changed the whole trajectory of the uh, speech. And he said, it's not that the tree is cursed. It's how fast I said it. 
said, and if you would learn to have faith, things don't take long to come to pass. Then he went to the next verses from my two members, and if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can say not to a little tree, but to a mountain. See, some of y'all got fig tree faith. And you're jealous of some of us that have mountain moving faith. Ask somebody, what type do you have? Is it tree faith or is it? And if you ask, then you might as well answer them and don't lie. Some of y'all should have told you, I'm somewhere between tree. Mountain. He said, you'll be able to say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast to the sea, and it shall do whatsoever ye say. I said you may need to call in reinforcement, so reinforcement faith looks like this for the same two people. If you need it by Monday, you better touch somebody by Sunday. Because the reason why some of your things won't come to pass is they're congested in the size of your faith, right? So what you have to do, that if a cord can't reach a socket, you get an extension. Oh, if the socket is too far for what you need power of to reach, you don't buy another light. You just go pay for an extension. And some of y'all are paying twice for something you didn't have to pay twice for because all you needed was an extension. I'm going to keep talking until you catch it. Where there's no extension, there's an extinction. Where your faith goes away, your vision dies. Faith is the breath to what God has shown you. I do have the three members. I feel good. I got online members, period. They already writing. But let's look at Hebrews 11 because my character reference tonight is Noah. And some of you think you know everything, right? Some of you think you know everything. That's my dry joke for the night. Some of you don't know a nothing. But let's learn from Noah. Ain't nothing like having someone that's been through what you went through and they succeeded as a reference. And some of you may not scream on this. Your reference is sitting near you, but because y'all don't talk, because you want to just plug in for yourself, versus utilizing the extension that's not too far from you, you are generating no power. I'm connected to certain people, very few, everywhere. That makes sure that whatever God has for me, it happens. And when the light bulb blows, they put a new light right in my socket, right? You need somebody who loves you enough that they can look past you and see what God has called you to do. Some people only love you, but they don't love your purpose. They don't love your posture. They don't, y'all are real quiet right through there. It don't take faith for me to like you. It does take faith for me to put up with you. Because faith without works, you got to work on something you don't like. It's crazy when God gives you something you don't want to do and say, succeed in this, then I'll bless you, and you don't have a passion for it. So how do you accomplish that? By faith. None of us have to like what he's called us to do. But you better do it before he call you. Because where there's no extension, I still, there's extinction. I want to use the character reference, Noah. 
N-O-A-H. I know y'all deep. We know how to spell. This is for my viewers who love me when I talk through one of these apparatuses. I, I, I don't have any great swelling words to spell right now except Noah. And some of you, when people try to get on your nerve and get smart, you think you're going to be able to buy a house because it's Wednesday. You think all this stuff is real. Uh, listen, I want you to know that God sent me into your life to, to show you what's real because you're living in a fantasy world. So you want to hear what I say? Say no. Uh, that's all you got to tell them. That's just, just no. No. Uh. No, no. I don't want to hear what you have to say. Because if I hear it, you infect what my faith has already heard. Because faith cometh by hearing. And if I hear your negativity on top of what God's already told me, it infects the whole situation. Be careful of the infection. It's a person that does not believe, does not care, not concerned. Be careful where you give your ear. If you got three people near you who agree with that, high five them. Tell them, do you agree with that? I have people all the time around the world trying to impress me by saying, I got a word from the Lord for you. I've got vision people. I've got dreamers. I've got conjure people. I've got back backyard witches and warlocks. I've got people who claim they're spiritualists looking for, I got two or three of you in here. I got all y'all, right? Who feel like God is downloading into you for your pastor. You really believe that? That's not even how the Bible works. Oil drips from the head down, not from the ankles up. You can pray for me, but you cannot lead me. And every time you try it, you're going to get your feelings hurt. I had a dream about you yesterday. You and Freddy Krueger enjoyed that dream, yeah? Because your dreams do not control my steps. Some folk need to see you hurt, then God speaks to them. Because you had a cheat sheet. I told you I was sad. All of a sudden, God showed me why you're sad. Why you didn't know I was sad before I told you I was sad? Why didn't you know about my heart before I said it? Why don't he show you what I'm going through before I create the cheat sheet? Then I'd be amazed. I'd be amazed. What? I'll start asking you some more questions because maybe you're the one God is speaking through. We need references. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you might be my reference. Or you may be my reference. And let me say this for three folk who will jump, whoever the three are. Sometimes God takes some of us through hell to become the reference for the folk that need to come out. Sometimes what you're going through has really nothing to do with you whatsoever. God is designing you to help somebody else. You really can't help me out if you've never been in. Touch somebody and tell them that. But we want to talk about Noah. I'm almost finished. Abraham needed faith. Sarah needed faith. We learned that from the book of Hebrews. So many other characters like Enoch and other people that I'm going to show you as we continue the journey. But tonight I'm fascinated by Noah. Look at somebody and tell them, you fascinate me. Boy, I want to preach this, but I can't. Tell them, I know you're going through something, but you never look like the thing that you're going through. Tell them, you fascinate me. Tell them, you ain't got to tell me what you're going through. I don't want to know no details. I just like the way you carry yourself during this. 
you fascinate me. Always smiling, always dancing, always encouraging somebody, giving folk $10 when you ain't got a job. You fascinate me. Somebody without being cocky, but be confident and tell them, I know I'm fascinating. I, I am, I'm fascinating. And I want you to say this to your neighbor. Notice what I'm doing. I'm making you repeat after me so that the same God of faith will be activated in you. Look at your neighbor and tell them these words. About time you find out about the hell I'm going through, faith would have brought me out. Just go on and tell them. Tell them about time you find out it's going to be old news. Faith will bring you out to let you help someone out. I'll say it again. Faith will bring you out to use you to help someone else come out. If that's the truth, you might as well tell your neighbor, you coming out of this then tonight. God did not take you through all of this to put you in the hall of faith for you not to talk kingdom trash against every evil spirit that comes against you. You should testify and let the devil know, I'm fascinated. That word fascination is also embedded within two or different words that have two different meanings. I don't want to go too far. And that is the reason when you know that you are fascinating, that means people can't help but keep watching you. I wish they mind their business. They can't. I wish they stop looking at me. They cannot. Whoever God puts the light on, whoever God is letting shine, it's for everybody to get a glimpse of who you are. If you don't want them to dislike you, ask God to take away the fascination. Young adults, I ain't heard from y'all tonight. But look at two and three people again and say it with confidence, I am fascinating. And your pastor, Dr. Todd Hall, I'm fascinated by these characters. Each character is in the hall of faith because they're fascinating. So I want to read it. Hebrews, I heard that statement. <laughs> Hebrews 11, verse 7, in the King James Version and then in that of the Message Bible. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. I thought my three would have caught that. Moved with fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his house. Faith does not let you build something for yourself. I tried to talk to you the whole time. You are doing what you're doing because someone else does not have the faith to do it. Watch it, Patty. Elder Jackson respectfully preparing an ark for the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, look what it says, which is by faith. Faith is making you the heir to something. Tell your happy neighbor what I told you, because I'm not going to tell you again. You're about to take over something you didn't work for. But when you get it, it's going to work for you. I'll move on. I'll move on. Because I said I'm only looking for three, and I'm going to maintain that number. Put this in the message Bible. It makes it more simple, more practical. By faith, 
Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. You need faith in your driest season. Tell somebody and tell them, so faith is like a fresh glass of water for someone spiritually dehydrated. I just heard my Ber Berlin said, let's go Wow. He was warned about something he couldn't see and acted on what he was told. I can't see it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I don't want to, but because God said it, I'm going to obey him even though I don't have a passion for what he has asked me to do. Some of my young adults are coming to life. Some in the mix, they still dry. He was warned about something he couldn't see. Acted on what he was told. The result? His family was saved. Not because they had any faith. Whole family got saved over one dose of faith. You're going through hell that your family ain't going through because God is testing your faithfulness. And once your faith gets to a certain level, God will change the whole family. I heard a scream over there. I got to go. I ain't going to call you. What was the result of doing something I don't want to do, doing something that I can't see, but my family was saved. His act of faith drew a sharp line between the evil of the unbelieving world, let's flip it, and the rightness of the believing world as a result. Noah became intimate we say intimate root word intimacy the precursor word into me see so that meant Noah could see more about God than the average human being touch of my temple don't get jealous that my faith has made me a little more intimate with God that's why some of us don't need an organ to start shouting or a prophecy to get excited because we have an intimate relationship. When you don't talk to me, it bothers me, but not to the point where I have a problem because God speaks to me on a regular basis. I don't have a hunger for communication. I have a hunger for agreement. If people are talking to you that don't agree with you, that's not a conversation. That's an infection. You got to talk to somebody that when you talk, they, they can see the bigger picture and they understand God is up to something and they want whatever God is up to to come to pass in your life by any means necessary and you ought to shout yes. Jessica's mama has been attacked. And I'm talking to you now prophetically. Your mama should have been died years ago. Years ago. And you probably after her. But God's goodness. God honored somebody's prayers. And now he let you live. You're doing better. He attacked your mama who loves this church. She could go blind is what the doctor says. But if you increase in your faith tonight, you don't need me to pray for your mama. I'm doing that already. Your mama needs you to pray for her. Now, don't hug her if you ain't got no faith. We don't want pity. We want faith. We want agreement. No tissue, no love, just faith. You touch her, it's out of agreement, not out of pity. We don't raise no wimps in here. I wish I had church 
And she from New York. She mine. She ain't yours. Her last pastor's under me. We don't do this. Feel sorry for yourself. Work on your stuff. Don't touch me while you failing. You hear me? Touch me while you succeeding. Use the faith you have to get victory for yourself first. That's what's wrong with certain churches, even this church to an extent. We keep draining each other. And then the drain is praying for the drain. Don't touch me. If you're not an extension, you're an extinction. Work on you. Bishop, I need a scripture because you're throwing off. Work out your own soul salvation with fear. The devil ain't after your money. He after your faith. Faith can replace lost money, but money can't buy you no faith. Let me get out of here. Noah through faith became intimate with God. Faith is intimidating to folk that are not intimate with God. Now, I know three of you won't jump for this, but if I can get you and it's real, you'll be blessed, and that's this. Some folk don't like you because they see too much of him in you. And the way they try to decrease him in you is they look at your mistakes outside of that. They refuse to focus on your purpose. they rather magnify your problems. But you must order God, order my steps. In your word. I don't have to be perfect for that order to be filled. Lead me and guide me every day. Send your anointing. Father, I pray. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps. Y'all don't know the rest of the song. I want to walk worthy. My calling to fulfill. If you order my steps, Lord, I'll do your perfect will. Your word is never changing. What? But you are still the same. So if you order my steps, I'll praise your name. Look at your neighbor, tell them, don't drain me, drive me. Don't drain me, drive me. I've got 10 minutes and I've got to do this. The Matthew Henry commentary says this. Quote, open quote. We cannot come to God unless we believe that he is what he revealed himself to be in the scripture. You cannot see God outside scripture. I see in the spirit. Your spirit better coincide with scripture. See, it's getting too quiet now. I may not know no Bible, but I can hear God. No, I'm sorry. If my church, those that I supervise, want to know who God is, you must read the Bible on a regular basis, even if it's for two minutes a day. You may not know what it's saying, but by the time you get to church, I'll be preaching it, and, I, and you'll be saying, God just gave me that scripture this morning. That means he's listening to you. But you don't even know if he's listening if you're not reading.
I'm boring two demon-possessed people, but you'll be okay. You stay here long enough, faith will cure you of that infection. I want to insert something. Only two of my members put it on social media, and they must have put my name on it because it came to my notification. That's how it happens. It came to my notification. I'm learning how to use it. I'm going to hire a young person to really teach me who's sterile. It came uh, over my feed. That's what it did. When it came over my feed, I must admit this, I said in this church and 10 other churches at the beginning of the year of January, this is the year for women. I made that so clear. I also said to private meetings and bishops around the world and to two or three of you in here that when men fix dinner, they need to open the refrigerator and see portions of food so that they know what they make. But when they tell their wives or grandmother there's no food, they go in there, the woman, and sees what we cannot see. And out of nowhere, food comes out of that kitchen because women can see what men cannot see. Look at these men acting deep. Men make a mess, women clean it up. Let me say it again. I'm a man and y'all don't want to clap. We make the mess, they clean it up. We hold the baby when the diaper's fresh. When it's soiled, take him to his mama so she can change the diaper. And I said that to say this. Our uh, Republican candidate for president almost got assassinated. I don't want to see anything wrong happen to him. I did not prophesy that type of evil. People think they see things in the spirit. Prophecy is to exalt, edify, and comfort. So if you see in that kind of stuff, trying to prove you're a prophet, that was not for you to prophesy, that was for you to rebuke. But it's okay, because we're not teaching on prophecy. Look how quiet. Because you see her getting pregnant and she get pregnant doesn't make you a Does not make you a prophet. It makes you an uncaring person because he showed it to you to stop her from getting pregnant. Prophecy is only used to edify, exalt. Oh, y'all quiet. God does not show diarrhea at the mouth people, people's business outside of his will. That is not God. I bet that won't get practiced in this church either. But I said that to say, if something that uh, critical, severe, happens to me, there's no way I can get up and still be talking the same way I did. You cannot call women hallucinators, heretics, she dumb. You better be careful. Everybody better be careful right now that's attacking Kamala Harris. Y'all better hear your bishop. You better hear your bishop. I believe whoever say they save is saved, but I will say this for three folk who scream. I have not seen the Republican president's pastor yet, but I have seen Kamala's president the same day. And no one, not even President Barry, who's my favorite, has raised as much money in one day as this woman. Now what makes me sick is you women don't have enough faith to push another woman. That's why you don't have the rights over your own bodies. Because a woman's biggest enemy is another woman. I'm back. I got off course. (laughs) 
Bishop, you think Biden should have seen? Don't ask me the kind of question because I already told several people last year. I said Biden is going to drop out. I made that very clear last year. We cannot come to God, quotes, open quotes, unless we believe that he is what the scripture says he is. Let's move quick, because you women mad at me now. I don't mind if she win. Her husband be kissing her right on the stage and taking up for her, taking up for his wife, and he ain't trying to get in the limelight. She got something y'all still waiting on. A man that's not intimidated by a woman that's full of success and power. She got it. The Bible is not for that. Don't know what Bible you're reading, but you better ask prophetess Deborah. I don't know what Bible you're reading now. Matthew Henry commentary, we cannot go to God unless we believe that he is what he has revealed himself to be in the scripture. To the person, I won't say where you're sitting, who just said, I don't agree and I need to see, I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one with Bishop. You're going to have 10 minutes right after church. They will let you in. I want to hear what God has told you. And I want to be able to announce it in this church when it does not happen. what's wrong with all of us we all think that because we survived something evil that we're chosen and you believe because you survived it that makes you next you ought to thank God that he didn't let whatever could have happened to any of us happen it does not mean we get to become cocky and unbearable and arrogant and hard to deal with these situations should make us more humble how come you women in the middle ain't clapping? Y'all still mad at me in the middle? Y'all mad at your sister because she ain't really black? It ain't about being black. It's about your rights. Now, if I got to choose between the lesser of two evils, I won't push you. I've already chosen. won't say who it is, but open quotes. We cannot. <laughs> We cannot come to God unless we believe that he is and that he is what the scripture says. Those who would find God, give me my three people, must seek him with all their heart. Here's the line that I like, and I'm going to see who screams on this, who learns. Noah's faith influenced his practice. It moved him to build something he couldn't see. His faith condemned the unbelief of other people. Quote, unquote. My subtopic, after order my steps, faith and order my steps, I have a subtopic for all of these teachings because one day I'm going to put all this stuff in the book. My subtopic for 10 folk who will jump quick is get it off the ground. Now, I know you don't understand it. You don't understand it yet. But look at your neighbor and tell him, I've got to get it off the ground. Let me make a common sense statement and see if one man or woman will scream or push me. You can't build the ark in the air. Some of you are too high up for God's rules. And you don't build any high structure from the top down.
Look at your neighbor, prophesy, and see if they receive it. Tell them from the bottom up. That's how it works. Tell them no matter who you are, what family you're from, the correct way to build is from the bottom up. My young people pushing me tonight. The middle section done died out on me because they mad that I talked about a woman. But some of y'all open the refrigerator and you can't even make potluck. I'm here to tell you. Some of you women ain't talking because you can't cook at all. Because to cook, you must be familiar with ingredients. And to make a good meal, you must read. Everything is not YouTubable. Did I just make up a word? Amen. Through the lenses of Hebrews 11, I have so many characters of reference that I would like to choose, but I wanted to choose one that was challenging and life-changing for us to research. That character is not, I, I am reading for us to go. We need a better mic or pay more for a mic that don't go in and out if I got to buy it myself. It is so important that you have enough scriptural knowledge so that you can reference who God has done something for and then ask him do it for you. The Bible is a manual of what God has already done and what he has the power to continue doing. But sometimes your prayers are not answered because you have not found a reference of whose prayer he's answered. If you marry one baby but can't get pregnant yet, you got to throw Sarah in the face of God. You've got to throw, oh, y'all done got quiet. Now, you got to tell God if you got power to make a virgin have a baby, can't you just let me have one? You got to bargain like hell. No. You got a bargain like Hannah. Lord, give it to me. I'll give it. But if you don't have reference. Yep, some of y'all look lost because you came from a church of spiritualism, not scripture. So you're caught up with miracles, but miracles don't get you to heaven. At all. It's going to be a miracle if you get there. If God say, taught you in, I ain't going to care about nobody. I'm going to be break dancing. I'm going to be doing everything. Man, listen. Because if the righteous scarcely be saved, y'all too deep. I know I'm going. Yeah, you hoping you going. You don't know what you're going to do before you take your last breath. And you know how many people, including me, that I've seen said I'll never do something and did it? Am I there by myself or somebody else going to shout amen? It could never be me. It could never be me. You know? I hear you, Berlin. It is so important that you have enough scriptural knowledge is why I beg y'all to come on my favorite day because that's the only way you're going to build up your most earnest faith. I want to show you the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7 through 9 for a reason. And after that, I promise you, I'm going to express. Because we were talking about needing a scriptural base. I think I may blow your mind tonight too. I think I just feel like blowing everybody's mind with the Bible. Remember, this is what the scripture says. Hebrew chapter 13, 7 through 9. This is after Hebrews chapter 11. This is how you maintain your faith and begin to build on your earnest faith. When I read it, those who are catching it, just wave or something. It said, remember them that have rule over you. Put it on my screen. Put it on, thank you. Who have spoken unto you, not everybody, 
the word of God. The prerequisite of the respect is how they feed you the word of God. I respect my elders, but the rulers that God puts over my life, they, they, they must have a foundation in the word of God. If your leader don't know no scripture, you can respect them. But this says, let them rule. Let what they say have more weight than what you believe. Because sometimes your belief is not in line with what the scripture is saying. This is what I believe. But what does the scripture, give me a mic. What does the scripture say? Take this off me. Remember them, cut it up, and y'all have people who can do more than one thing. Remember them, cut it up, which have rule over you. Thank you. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. Not just preaching it, their faith follows. I can't get help over it. Cut the house up too. In your game. Considering the end of their conversation. Don't hear the parts you want to hear. Even if it frustrates you in the beginning, aggravates you in the middle, you must give a person that is a pontificator of the prolific text of God the opportunity to complete their didactical approach to the complexity of scripture. care how old you are you gotta listen I've been in the way for 80 years you've been in the way but let me show you the way because your knowledge is powerful in the human world but in the spiritual world it's not your knowledge it's your understanding of scripture because your word can fail but God's word all right, I can't get no help. I can't get no sound, man. Cut that gain up in this and in that and touch what I tell you. I've been doing sound 30 years. God bless your lives. Remember them, thank you, that have rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. A lot of you ain't going to scream on this. Some of you can't respect a person's faith because you're too busy looking at their mistakes. It does not say watch their life. It said hear what they have to say and judge it by the conversation they're having and see if they believe anything they're telling you. Because you know more word don't mean you live a better life. It means you're held accountable for everything that you know. So I tell folks, stop trying to learn everything. I want to know everything about God. You're going to be held for everything. I'm taking my journey in, in segments. Episodes. I'm a... I'm a Netflix movie. Season one, 32 episodes. I ain't trying to go to season two that fast. Enjoy the season you're in. Let God make as many episodes out of you that he chooses. That's why he won't let some of y'all just get married quick. Because he needs you to go through enough episodes. Y'all know. Oh, 
so that when somebody else is about to rush and do wrong, you can tell them, watch my third episode. Watch my seventh episode. Well, how you get a man that good? I had to have a man that bad. How did you get treated like this? I had to survive being violently taken advantage of. Some of y'all ain't enough to watch. Now, let me get out of here. You know what you deserve by what you survived. I will never. Let me get out of this verse. Considering the end of their conversation, verse 8, I don't know who's with me or not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, so what he's saying is, if you can find someone he did it for yesterday, then he can do it for you today. You got to have a reference. Not a jealousy. Not trying to outdo somebody or hurt someone. You want God to do it because this is what you feel you deserve. But you got to have enough faith for it. Am I boring y'all now? Thank you, Janice, because I'm about to close this. Then it says this, and this is where the world is today, and I'm trying to spare our ministry if y'all listen to how I articulate the scriptures. I mean no ill will when I'm preaching, even when I'm in rebuke mode. I love you. The Bible says open rebuke is better than secret love. Some of you are just still mentally abused where yelling just is it just triggers you, you traumatize. But you gotta learn when to grow up. Everybody yelling like your past ain't got the same mission of your past. Am I born y'all on that? So I need you to listen to me so when you hear this, the world is preaching not the gospel that our parents and grandparents preached. There is a new gospel out here. Oh, I don't hear my church talking. I don't hear my deacons. I don't hear my elders. Some of the stuff y'all are hearing online is not in line with the word of God. It's in line with your feelings of God. It's a masseuse, not a message. Y'all ain't talking. It's soothing you, not grooming you. That's why you say you agree with it, which means your feelings are in it. The scriptures don't need to be agreed with. The scripture going to be right whether you think it's right or not. If you are a child of God, you do not serve God from a place of emotions. You serve God from a place of commands. Y'all ain't talking. If God said it, that settles it whether I believe it. So because faith is being taught so differently and you are running away from what it actually is, verse 9 sums it up for one screamer. Be not carried away about with divers and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meat, which means I need a preacher of my taste. Which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. You must be careful that you remain where a clear vision and pure intent of scripture is being articulated. Even if it hurts you, tell your spirit, stay right here. Tell your flesh, I'm mad, but I'm getting my behind. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I'm getting myself up, and I'm going to sit there because my soul needs it more than my flesh. This is never about your flesh. The word of God is not a masseuse. When your feelings are hurt, that means your soul is growing. Will you tell somebody that and let's move on? God is maturing you into something greater.
The word articulate comes from the Latin word. It's Latin. Articulatus. Articulatus. It's Latin. The etymology is it's Latin. It means jointed or distinctly separated. The word is articulus, meaning joint. So the original meaning of articulate related to something being physical, joined together or separated into distinct parts. Let me give you an example because I thought y'all were at least with me to scream. When you ask for a chicken wing, if it's whole, it has three parts. See, I don't hear nobody. Sometimes if you want to eat it, you got to separate the joints. When you separate the joints of this wing, it's still the wing. But distinctly separated is different from joint. Distinctly separated for five million years in the future to jump is you got to know the difference in white meat and dark meat. So if I tell you I want all white meat and you give me a thigh, then I know you don't know how to rightly divide chicken. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. But if I ask for white meat and you give me a breast or a wing, wing is my example for screamers, then once you give me the wing and I break it, it doesn't mean I actually broke you. I made you more edible for who wants to eat. I cannot eat the whole wing. I have to separate the parts. Now, if I say this, 10 of you, no, I, I'm supposed to be sitting down. If I say this, then 10 of you ought to jump for yourself. If this year you have gone through a breaking, that does not mean God is upset with you. It means by faith he's about to serve you. And even if I'm a disjointed wing, I'm still the wing. You can call me a drumette. You can call me a flat. You can call. Steal the wing. And some people kill me. I eat wings, but I don't eat flats. Y'all kill me with this. I eat flats, but I don't eat tips. I eat the smaller part, not the big part. Y'all sound retarded. Be seated. That sound retarded. Some of you have followed preaching that does not know the difference in dark meat or white meat. You don't know this unless you went to culinary school. The only part of a chicken that could be dark or white is a wing. Look at folks. See how you got deep? Uh, you deflated. It's based upon how you cut it. Oh, y'all just missed it. And some of y'all still don't catch it because you got to sit where the word of God is black or white. You can't go where it's everything. Well, heaven is for everybody. No, heaven is for the righteous. Heaven is not for everybody. Heaven is for them that live holy. Heaven is not for everybody. Y'all, y'all got to stop that. Ain't nobody going to hell. Be careful unless your name is nobody. But let me. We don't preach that here. Now they can preach wherever they want to. But we don't believe that here. Now I see one or two of my members. Well I somewhat believe it. Then take your wings and fly. Go fly. 
Because what you're saying is God is a let you do anything you want to type of God. And that is not God. Is there anyone raised right who wants to see a better version of yourself? Every time I see a disappointing version of me, I get very upset with myself. I don't need nobody get mad at me. I know how to get mad at me. Because I know I'm fascinating. Say it to yourself till you believe it. You don't believe it for yourself. Then you get mad when people believe it for themselves. My faith is at a level where it makes me fascinated. I can wear mismatched colors and different shoes and one day they be like, that's a new style, ain't it? Faith will make you very intriguing. Faith will have somebody imitating you by the next week. So when you see people wishing they were you, that's flattery. That's not jealousy, that's flattery. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. In my conclusion, in the word articulate, I said I was going to make Father Hope talk to me at the end after church, is the word article. Within the word articulate, articulation, articulus, articulators, articulators, is the word article. When you read Hebrews 11, this is for three jumpers who want to be debt free this month. And this month only, only has a few days left by faith. Catch this. God puts you in what he puts you in. And he's about to get you out according to your faith. Because he needs your story, your article to be mesmerizing. When people read and see how you came out of what you're in... Uh, God is turning your story into an article. Now, hold on. In the root, root word, the substratum of the word articulatus, articulus, article, and article is the word art. That word art means several things, but I'll give you this. It means you're about to become the picture that God drew of you before you were born. The Bible said, before the foundations of the world was framed. I might as well quote this because y'all ain't screaming. God says for some of us, I know the plans I have for you. And the only thing that can stop his plans is yours. I know the plans I have for you. And at the end of that, it says dot, 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 that plans of a good expected end. Which means mind-blowing. On this I close. By faith. I'm going to see who talks to me now. I'm closing. Noah built a design called an ark. Here we go. And I'm preaching it the next time I preach here. And had no idea how it would get off the ground. He built something that one's supposed to float, one's supposed to elevate, y'all ain't tell, and one's supposed to move. Y'all ain't tell, just, God put it in his spirit, and the whole world kept laughing every day for 120 years. Y'all ain't, 100 and, you made something today that ain't coming out until a whole century and, now, if I say this and my church don't scream, you blew it. People are jealous of you and hate you because you see too far for them. That, that's, you just see too far. Some folk can only see for today. The furthest some folk can see is next month, how I'm going to pay my rent. But some of us are seeing like five years down the road, ten years down the road. We're not asking God to make us rich. We're telling God we already know we're going to be rich. We're just trying to figure out how to live while we're not. Y'all ain't talking. And that takes faith. Princess, it's good to have you again. That takes faith.
but yet by faith. Listen to this next level. I'll be preaching it when I come back. He yet continued to preach on what was never seen before. So what he had to do, I'm going to hope somebody scream, to get that boat that is supposed to get off the ground up, he had to preach about rain. Ain't nobody ever seen it. Y'all ain't talking to me. And some of y'all leaving our church because you don't like what we preaching. And I understand. You don't like that what we preach and don't feel good now, but it'll help you get off the ground later. Oh, you don't like this. You just want a big old boat. Third thing I want to say about this, because y'all didn't scream good enough to even qualify, is the boat was made on the ground. The rain came from above. Now, this is how this works. Faith without work. Somebody got to be working, not seeing it. And then God sees what you're working on and he rains on it, right? All right. God's got to see you working and nobody helping you. He got to see you working and it's your driest season. He's got to see you working and you're frustrated and angry. Then God says, think it's time to send the rain. Don't respond to the boat. Get ready for the float. Would you tell your neighbor that? Don't respond to the boat. I'm closing now. Because I felt the preacher rising up. Nope. I got to preach tomorrow. I hope you that are watching online, I hope your faith is increasing. I hope you understand where you are at this time in life. You can only do the part he asks you to do and the part you can't do and can't see. That's his business. You got to focus on the part that you can do. And do it to the best of your ability. So that when God elevates it, it's not trash. It's not something that doesn't fascinate people. When God sends your promotion, you want people to admire where you came from and where God took you. It took over 40 days of rain because what was on the ground needed that much. Let's close with these two things. And you that stood up and didn't speak up, you can't be from this church. You must be a member of two churches. But five of you catch this. What made the boat float, which is rain, is the same thing that killed who doubted you. Because they lived outside of your vision. Uh-oh, it's real quiet. And talked about how stupid you were for believing in this vision. God said they'll never live to talk about it. The only people who died in the world were them that didn't get in the boat. They didn't get in the boat because they didn't believe in what he built. They thought he preached on a certain thing too long, and because they saw no evidence of it, the man is off. It's going to rain. It's hot. It's going to rain. It's dry. It's going to rain. The white people look black. The tan over in Ethiopia killed everybody. It's going to rain. He's on his 300th birthday. It's going to rain. Every Sunday, I ain't going to that church no more. They preach the same thing all the time. It's going to rain. Oh, it's going to rain. Oh, it's going to rain. I see the drops come out. I it's going to rain. It's going. And I keep telling you, you're going to be debt free. You're going to be wealthy. You're going to be married. You're going to own a business. You're going to be an entrepreneur. And I'm going to say it to the day I live. 
and maybe till the day you die. See, I'm going to live to see it. You're going to die because you can't. Faith is a pair of glasses for folk that are blind. We said it's a walk in the dark. Substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. When my body went under such a drastic attack after pastoring you all, never experienced anything till I started pastoring you all. I'm not blaming you. I'm blaming that Satan knows that now that he's responsible for sheep, he may have gone to God and said, can I test him? And he allowed some of you to do certain things, say certain things that would frustrate me that I never had to hear before that a gangster wouldn't even let you say, right? And God says, I need you to mellow through this right here. Then the heart issue and then the prostate issue. And, and I shared it with you all. But today when I was studying this, outside it was raining and I still stayed. The first thing God told me, and I had two young men with me, my hand to God, and they'll tell you, they're watching. God said, if you believe in me just this one time, I'll show you how much faith you have with me. Raise your hand and I'll make it stop raining. It was pouring. I didn't believe it, so I did it slow, you know, because I don't believe that. But he said, you must first tell the two guys with you. I was like, uh-uh, you ain't going to have me looking stupid. Well, I'll tell them. See, y'all laughing as if you just should have did it. Then you should just have a house. If I can just make it stop raining, I got other things I need that power for. I don't care about no rain. Let it rain all week. See, some of y'all ain't real. I didn't have power over the rain till he gave it to me. Oh, y'all. And he gave it to me with me not feeling anything different. And I was still too afraid to do it because of the embarrassment of an announcement. I'd have did it if I didn't have to speak it first. Because then I wouldn't have had no blame whether it happened or not. But I told my boy Keyshawn, I'm sorry, I named names. I said, uh, God said, well, it was porn. He said, Pop, it ain't going to happen. I lifted quick. It stopped. He said, uh-uh, I got to go to the bathroom, and I'm up out of here. I went in my truck and said, Lord, what just happened? Then the Lord told me, tell your members, if they hear what the word is saying, don't let the doctor heal you. Preach your way into healing. And some of you don't recognize the situation you're in. You've got the tools. To build your ark. Y'all in. And save you. I'm preaching myself through the knowledge of what I know about the scripture into alignment. Whose report? report will you believe and don't quote the scripture don't answer it till you believe it his report said you need a miracle healing he was wounded ain't no milligrams for a miracle you need a scripture for a miracle you can take 20 pills and can't quote 20 scriptures. No, you got to quote what your soul needs. Then the spirit controls the body. If God could take dirt and water and make vision, he sure can heal kidneys and lungs and organs. I'm using this series as of today to tell my whole life you must get in alignment through the scriptures. So that when I tell you with power it can be done, 
you'll see it in the end of my conversation. Now, my guys who hang with me every day, they already know how serious I am about ministry, God, and the Bible. I'd rather live and minister for God than to have a happy marriage, a mansion, a car, and a home. I am not using ministry to get those things. I could have used my talent for that. I could have sold pharmaceuticals for that. I could have buy one and got one free for that. When you know you're a baller, brawler, shot caller, you know what your abilities are, but you'd have been going to hell. But ministry kept me in my right mind. Ministry helped me survive everything I came out of a stroke, cancer, divorce, child out of wedlock. And I'd be darned if I ever put it on the burner just to make sure that any of us are not offended. You know how many deaths we should have had in this church during, during COVID? And some of my members still ain't screaming and they took it easy. I got it. it no, no, it was terrible. And for some of y'all to pull through it while you had pre-existing illnesses? You don't have COVID no more, but you still got the other illnesses. Why he let you get over one but not pull you out of all? Because you were threatened by the announcement of COVID that is killing people. So you only worried about the more drastic thing. Now you're complaining about what's left. That's not the way this works. I have never been told by a doctor that I've had COVID, I've been tested several times. But I believe if Elder Mixon remembers, because only few people knew, I believe that before there was a COVID, that I had it. See, I'm trying to encourage you. I was laying in my living room, in my family room, and, oh, you remember? And I was laid back. No one had it yet. And I was laid back with covers over my head, and I could not get up. I couldn't talk. Elder Mixon Nolan was saying, man, what's wrong? I said, I have no idea. You hungry? No. And I knew I should have died. But they hadn't. But there was no announcement about COVID. There was nothing. And I asked God, what do you do? He said, before Moses could lay hands on Miriam, he had to have power by having it himself. So when Moses put his hand out, it was white as snow. He put it back, it restored. Then when his sister looked like his hand. So some of you don't understand, you don't just sit under people. You got to sit under what you need to come out of. You got to be able to understand that every true man or woman of God is going to be a reference. You see how you just missed it? And that when you see them going through whatever they go through, don't see them as a mistake. See them as a reference. Wait till I preach on Lot, because he had faith. But y'all do him bad. I did him bad in the first two seasons. My first two episodes with Lot, I made him look terrible. But my next episode, we're going to get a lot back. Tell somebody and tell them I'm about to recover a lot. I can't wait. I can't wait. I said I can't wait. What was negative in one season can become positive in your next. Look at somebody and tell them, coming out at a church near you. Everyone standing, even if you're not understanding. Everyone standing, even if you're not understanding. God is giving our ministry a chance to fight the infection. But you all must stop eating from all of these internet tables. 
I don't want to see any of my members unless you're licensed and you are thorough online trying to prophesy and minister online. Get a release. It is too many maniacs out here. Spirits are spreading quicker by technology. All right, I'm going to leave that. The Bible calls it spiritual wickedness in high places, which is satellites. For Satan has power in the air, the firmament. So everything now is being controlled without wires and without connections. And some of y'all are listening to folk that are not connected. Everything is from the spirit realm. We don't do spiritualism here. We do the Holy Ghost here. And they are not the same. If any of you tell me put five portions of this, two portions of this, and put a piece of scripture in a glass and drink it, I'm going to rebuke you. Because what you're referencing has no scripture. That's what I'm trying to teach y'all. If you can't find a reference, don't do it. Can y'all try that? Why are y'all not? I said, can you try that? Even if you want to try it, don't do it. That's how sin got here. God told him don't eat, but he kept looking at the tree. It's not going to be easy for younger people. So we have to be a reference for them. But for some of us that are getting older, we ain't got too many references. I told somebody, even when you make a mistake, I'm going to see who screams on this, who got a sense of humor, anybody close or far. I don't care if you make a mistake. Just make sure you mess up. Don't mess down. Y'all ain't talking. Don't let me. Let, all right, forget it. I'm going to mess up. Don't you lose your wife over the next person, no teeth, all out of shape. Boy, you done messed down. Don't you lose a good man and get a bum with no job, no vision, talking about I love you, and he sleep till 3 o'clock. You done, you done messed down. We all going to make mistakes. But make sure you mess up. I'm going to say this for three, four, because some of y'all still didn't catch it because you ain't smart anymore. You don't like the word mess at all. But when the ark went up, it had animals, and they did release their mess. And the mess went up with them. And when they got there, they started being a farmer, and they needed all the mess that y'all didn't want to make for fertilization. So don't play with me. I understand where I'm going. Just stay on my boat. I have made mistakes, but I more than likely, I mess up. Are y'all understanding me? Young people, it's going to take y'all a little longer because you need some age and experience. So if people try to bash you, you need to find somebody else who can talk to you according to your faith. Your faith is not 80 years old. Your faith is not 60 years old. Your faith is your age. Your faith kicks in by what you understand the Bible saying. So don't let no fool call you a demon that don't have scriptures to prove that every mistake is not demonic. You that are clapping, you're wholesome. You that ain't, you worry me. Some of you are best at being infectious. You're real good at that. But you need to go to God during these troubled days. I mean, the world is crazy. We don't need no more of the nutsy stuff. We need to be there for one another. And for others. And for others. Y'all still quiet? And for others. We must learn to do good to them that, all right, let me leave that alone. You've got to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do unto others as you would have them. All right. Did you learn anything this evening? 
Did you learn enough that you could share some of it with somebody? Then that means I've done my job. Get your seed for your pastor, whatever the amount it is. Deacons are coming. They look so good. I'm going to have some church tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to preach, but I promise you I'm going to have some church. And I still hear God speaking loud. Some of you need to stay in a church and stop moving around. 